Hey everyone, it's Blue Lizard Jello, and welcome back to Blue Plays Terraria Expert Hardcore Edition. And we are starting here just so I can show you a little contraption that I built, and I am actually proud to say whether or not this is actually going to work, but I made this all on my own without any sort of tutorial. I didn't even look up any ideas, I just kind of had something in my head that maybe would work, and sadly I haven't had a chance to use it. This is going to be, hopefully, how I farm the Martian spaceships in the Martian Madness event. And here is how it should theoretically work. So as you can see, I'm pretty high off the ground. And my thought process is if I'm high off the ground, then the typical mobs won't be able to spawn as frequently. And the spaceship should spawn more commonly. Uh, hopefully, that's, that's my theory at least. And then they will come to try to get me. And I have the side slope. So they will hit there. And they will go up to these walls that have actuators in them. So if they come from the left... I click that and they can go right through and then I can trap them if they come from the right I can click this and the oh. okay so apparently I have some wires crossed here but that's okay so actually that just kind of shows the the next thing I was gonna look at so we have spear traps spiky ball traps and flame traps hooked up to a one second timer and when I turn on this switch or apparently that one it activates these traps and if I can get the spaceship trapped in there it should kill it that is my theory. I haven't had a chance to test it out. I have looked and looked and looked for another Martian probe, and I haven't seen another one yet. Even though I have their spaceship and I can go into space to wait for them, I still haven't seen it, which is a darn shame. But that brings us to what are we doing today? Well, if you are observant, you may have noticed that I have the golden bug net in my inventory because we are going to go on the hunt for a truffle worm down in our artificial mushroom biome right uh, right here. And we are going to catch a truffle worm so we can go and actually fish for Duke Fish Run over there in the... Oh, do you have any money for me? Eh, just under two gold, alright. Yeah, we're going to go to the ocean and try to take on Duke Fish Run. So, a couple of things to talk about, and I will do that as we head over to our underground mushroom biome. You will notice that I have swapped out the... Uh, what were they called? Nymphs? No, pygmies. Oh my goodness, not nymphs, pygmies. <laughs> I've swapped out the pygmies for the uh, the twins for my summons because my theory is that the pygmies are ground units. So if I'm fighting something in the air, which Duke Fisheron does fly, and I'll be using the flying saucer mount just about extensively, by the way, I do have to be mindful that because... I now have, or I'm not using the wings, and we'll talk about that in a second. I need to switch to those if I'm going to fall long distances. Otherwise, that will be the end of me. Okay, let's go over here and so we can keep talking. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Get him. What is that? That's a cool little creature. Oh, I've seen those before. I have seen those before. So anyway, since I'm going to be flying in the air, I think the twins might be a little bit better suited. By the way, Plantera Bulb, if we ever want to fight her again. Um, I did actually accidentally destroy one of those when I was actually farming a little while ago, but I just got right out of dodge. I had no uh, interest in fighting her. All right, now that we are relatively, s well, sort of relatively safe. Okay, it doesn't look like she can get to me. Let's take a look actually at my loadout. I'll pop a shine potion just so you guys can see. So because I'm using the flying saucer mount, I don't have a need for my... Oh, they're in my inventory for my lightning boots. I don't have a need for my wings, so I can swap those out now. Because the flying saucer is faster than those items. And we're going to be using those pretty extensively, except when we're underground, which, you know, maybe just to be safe, we will do that. So let's take a quick look and see the armor. So it's still the beetle set. I have the tiki set, which we'll be using for these summons to make them as strong as possible. And then for the staples, I have the onk shield. Menacing Destroyer Emblem, the Warding Worm Scarf, Warding Master Ninja Gear, and I'll be using the Warding Celestial Shell and the Lucky Avenger Emblem. I have been farming to get another Sunstone from the Golem, so I can actually use the Celestial Shell and the Celestial Stone, I think it's what it's called. But I haven't actually had another Sunstone drop. I've been kind of unlucky there. But we will keep farming for that and get it eventually. But I think this is a pretty good loadout. It is a mixture of offense and defense. And then let's take a look at the weapons I plan on using. So the Possessed Hatchet, rerolled to Godly, is uh, so far one of my favorite weapons. The tracking ability is incredible. But this, this is quickly becoming my all-time favorite so far. And it looks unimpressive. But the way that it works is, and let's see if I can test it on this. See how 
I hit her once, and then two more Phantom Blades showed up. Every time you hit an enemy with the Phantom Blade, it causes two more to attack, and they'll attack nearby enemies unless it's the only enemy that you're fighting, and in that case, it'll actually just hit the same enemy again. I've been seeing crits on this weapon upwards of 900 damage, and that can actually happen across all three of the hits. So that can be almost 2,000 damage if you actually get all hits, which is pretty cool. We are going to try, and I, this might be a mistake, we are going to try the Xenopopper. I think it's a fun weapon. I don't know how practical it's going to be, but I think maybe with Chlorified Bullets? I mean, that was that's kind of cool, right? Oh, there's a Truffle Worm. Okay, we're going to stop talking because if we can get the Truffle Worm right now, which um, what I'm going to do is actually switch out... Let's see, let's get rid of the wings. No, we want the wings just in case we fall. Let's get rid of the destroyer emblem for our, oh, I think it's already gone. Because we need to be fast. The truffle worms will disappear. So yeah, that's my loadout. I have the rainbow gun, I have the eye of Cthulhu, Dalo Stormbow, I doubt I'm gonna be using. Nimbus Rod, I do, did reroll to demonic, but I think that's gonna be sufficient. I, I really think that's going to be enough to, uh, do, to do it. Um, now I think what I'm gonna have to do here though is actually get rid of the twins because I'm afraid that they can actually kill the Truffle Worm. All right, so let's get in here. So this might take a few minutes, we'll see, and I'm gonna have to keep running down and actually killing enemies as they appear because the Truffle Worm counts, from my understanding, as a normal mob, which means that it follows the normal mob spawn rules. So if you have too many enemies on screen, he can't spawn. So. I will bring you guys back as soon as I find it, and then we're going to head over to the ocean. We don't have an arena to build because we're going to be flying, but we do have some chances to put down campfires, heart lanterns, and whatnot. Oh, truffle worm. Okay, where is it? Careful. Where is it? I don't see it. Oh, he left. Mm, I haven't even had a chance to see him yet. Okay, I'll bring you guys back momentarily. Oh, you son of a gun! That was a truffle worm you just killed. Ugh. All right, this farm is proving difficult to actually get a truffle worm out of. A few more tries here, and then we may move on just to one of the open mushroom arenas. Oh, truffle worm. Truffle worm, truffle worm! We got him. We got the truffle worm. All right, let's get out of here. Oh boy. Okay, so now I think, I think, I think we'll head over here. We're a little bit closer to this ocean, and we are just going to, uh, you know what? I don't have, I don't have any bricks, and I'm going to want some bricks so I can kind of put some campfires and heart lanterns up in the sky, I believe. So let's just quickly grab. Uh, do, 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 do I want stone? I know that this is silly. It really, really doesn't matter. Yeah, I guess stone block is fine. I don't even think I'm going to leave them. I think I'm just going to have platforms anyway, so it really doesn't matter. Anyway, let's head over to the ocean and... Whoop, wrong way. And start preparing for Duke Fishron. Technically speaking, I believe this is one of only two bosses left. I don't think the Lunatic Cultist counts officially as a boss. I don't think you get an actual treasure bag from him. No, I'm sure you don't. So... Technically speaking, we only have two bosses left, and this is one of them. So, over to the ocean, and I'll see you there. By the way, if you want your first look at the cultists... Oh, these are so cool. I love it. The mysterious tablet. Oh, boy. Your time is coming, guys. Your time is nigh. By the way, you will need a fishing rod. Don't be a fruitcake and leave without one like I did. All right, here we are. Let's start preparations. Ammo box. Sharpening station, which is actually probably going to be really, really helpful here. And be, yep, bewitching station. Good. And then we will do, let's get Piggy out. Okay. And, oh, all right, Piggy. Let's get our heart lanterns and campfires and platforms. There we go. All right, so campfire and heart lantern. Good. And where did I put my bricks? So the plan is, it is just about 11 o'clock Terraria time. I want to fight him first thing, or first light, I'll say. First light. So let's go. Whoop. 
you know, I'm gonna just destroy all these blocks anyway. I just want to get up into the air so we can put some uh, health regeneration up in the air where we're gonna spend most of our time. So after I see those buffs go away, there we go, go up a little bit higher. Okay, and then we can break a few of these. Heart Lantern and platform for campfire. Yeah, excellent. All right, so let me go ahead and do this. We're just going to repeat this maybe two or three more times with a heart lantern and a campfire just so we have as much health regeneration coverage as we can. Honey's really not going to be an option because if you hit any sort of liquid with the... Okay. If you hit any sort of liquid with the mount equipped, you do get dismounted, and that would be very, very bad. So I do not want to hit the ocean, and I do not want to hit any any honey so <laughs> all right guys see you in a bit okay it does seem like we have a nice big arena now that we can fly around we just need to make sure we avoid the blocks but you can see I have a lot of coverage with both the heart lantern and the campfire buff going on which is excellent so speaking of buffs we'll take a quick look at my potions I did do a little bit of replenishing so iron skin swiftness regen shine just for you guys more so thorns endurance wrath life force and summoning potions I got rid of the archer potions you might have seen them in the piggy bank because I have no plans on using the Daedalus Stormbow. bow um, it's just he's far too fast for it to be a viable weapon so we're not gonna be using any archery potions but it is almost time to summon so I'm gonna do a little bit of last-minute uh, inventory management and when I see you it'll be time to fight the Duke okay looks like Dawn is now here and it's time so here is the game plan we are going to hit these three items we, actually, no, we're going to buff first, hit these three items. I've already switched into my summoner gear to make my summons as strong as possible, so we'll summon our summons, switch back to our beetle armor and our regular accessories, and then we go fishing. <laughs> I'm going to try to compare the damages. That's actually why I picked up the goblin tech and turned on the DPS. I'd like to see what kind of DPS difference I can get between all these items. And I did put my... Mega Shark in there, switched out for the Daedalus Stormbow, just kind of as a as an emergency situation. Just, you know, if things get a little hairy, maybe that will uh, help me DPS him down. I don't know, we'll see. But, three, two, one, buff. There we go, and we'll do summon, summon, summon. Good, and then switch armor. And what else? There we go. Oh, wrong. Okay, all right. This is it, guys. Here we go. Duke Fisheron! Okay, so the key with Duke Fisheron, especially if you're using the the uh, UFO mount, is that you are fastest actually when you're going diagonal. So we're doing about, oh, we just got over a thousand DPS a second. That's good. DPS a second. Damage per second per second. All right, watch out for those. Okay, he is uh, he is taking some severe damage, and I I am not. So let's let's shake it up a little bit. Let's see if we can hit him with this at all, and see if we can. All right, 811. Uh, no, no. I think the hatchet is still is still better. But how about this? Which is not not great. <laughs> Uh, okay, we got over a thousand with the Xeno Popper, and you know what? It's actually really good for when he summons his. Oh, jeez, watch it, watch it. When he summons his sharks, actually. But other than that, oh, jeez, watch that thing though. All right, how we look? All right, let's get back down into health regen range, and I think we're going back to the hatchet. He's going to go into his last phase here. I'm gonna heal. I know I didn't switch to the Philosopher's Stone. I'm just, uh, I'm not good at it. Alright, here we go, here we go. This is when things can get really hairy. You just gotta keep moving. Keep moving. Uh, I am afraid that I'm not hitting him. I'm afraid that I'm not hitting him. I'm very afraid that I'm actually, I haven't hit him in a while. I'm not sure if that's the case or not, but it feels like it. Uh, 
Not good. Oh my gosh, we got him. We got him with 30 health left. <laughs> Guys, when that message flashed on the screen, I thought that was me dying. I thought I died. <laughs> Oh, and look, he dropped a shackle for us. Oh, good. This is exactly what we came here for. I wasn't even sure I was hitting him. I don't even know that I was. Oh, man. I'm going to have to watch the video to see. Uh, where did his drops go, though, by the way? Um, all right. Let's put my wings on because I think maybe they went in the water. Here it is. Here it is. Oh, my goodness gracious. I, <laughs> I thought we were toast. I thought we were toast. Oh. <gasps> Excuse me. Um, I know. I, I feel like maybe I'm overreacting a little bit, but if he hit me one more time, guys, I, I was dead and I didn't have a potion ready because I didn't use the Charm of Myths. All right. Well, we're alive. <laughs> and we got a shackle. Get out of here. Uh, all right. Ready? Three, two, one. Okay. So we got... Oh, really? That's it, huh? All right, the shrimpy, shrimpy truffle is pretty cool. It is a flying mount, so it would take the place of this. Um, it's pretty slow until you get it wet, and then you get a buff, which is just amazing. I don't know how fast it lasts. I thought it actually showed up here, but apparently not. But you can see, I mean, just the speed is incredible. In fact, I think I can compare. I think I have a movement speed. I do. So let's take a look at this. So max out at about 33 going diagonally max out at about 53 and then let's let's dip them in the water here and horizontal 67 diagonal looked like 78 before i started slowing down that's massive that is massive and i think yeah it is unlimited so if you can set up an arena with water every now and then it's very very good uh, and then I got the Tsunami. Shoots five arrows at a time. Ooh. Hey. I like that. Although it doesn't seem to actually use the arrows effect. Hmm. But I like kind of the, the five. And they're really well clustered. So you can get possibly a lot of DPS out of there. I'm probably going to fight him more off camera. I might even do kind of a, uh, a farm for him. I've seen those done. But I... Oh, they do! They do use the arrows. I just wasn't hitting anything. Oh, good stuff. Oh, that's impressive. And it only uses one arrow. Hmm. Something to think about. He has a lot of really, really good drops. So let's actually head back. And... Oh, jeez. Come on. Uh, uh, you're so big, though. I kind of... Oh, you know what? I need to... Uh... Thank you. Whew. <laughs> I thought it was dead. <laughs> oh my goodness. So, let's uh, let's actually real quick re-roll that. See if we can get what's the best on uh, on a bow. Is it deadly? No, it's not deadly. Unreal, unreal. Let's see if we can get unreal on the tsunami. I have five platinum to play with. Strong. <laughs> okay. I'll just go ahead and get it in three rolls. That's awesome. So 95 damage. Not bad. Plus, I could then use my quiver again. An extra 10% and greatly increased speed. Let's see. All right, so let's do kind of a quick test here. So pretty fast. Okay. And then if I swap this out for the wings, that's pretty quick. That has a lot of potential. That has a lot of potential. Very cool. But he has more items, so we're going to have to go after those. I think what I will do is the next episode, because we're starting to wind down, we're, we're starting to run out of things to do. I did get a request to do Shroomite gear just because, as they said, it is part of the Terraria experience, and I think I would like to do that. So we'll build a mushroom house, we'll get the truffle to move in, and then we'll actually make some Shroomite stuff just because we should, right? And then I would also like to test out this, and I'll show you guys whether or not it works. So it might just be a small little blip with post-commentary. And then I'm also going to play around with some Duke Fishron farms. It might not be truly AFK because I'm I'm terrible, but it might be a little bit safer than what I just did. 
Um, I've seen the one where you can use a slime to kind of make yourself immune to damage by having the slime hit you over and over as opposed to Duke Fish Run, so we might give that a go. But I will be doing some extensive research before, before we attempt that. But another great success. Another boss down. Very few things stand in the way from the Moon Lord. Just to recap, we're going to do the Pirate Invasion. We're going to do the Goblin Invasion. As simple as they're probably going to be for us now, just to say we did it. We're going to get the Truffle to move in so we can get all the NPCs. I think I think the Truffle's the last NPC at this point. I have the Cyborg. I have the Tax Collector. I'll have to look that up, but I think that's it. Oh, by the way, I got some developer armor. I got Chrono Set. Um, that was during one of my Goblin kills. Uh, not Goblin, Golem kills. So that was pretty cool. His wings look really neat, so I might actually use them as vanity, although I'm going to run out of space. Uh, but yeah, then we just have the Cultist, the Pillar Events, and the Moon Lord. Holy cow. And at some point, we are going to have to kill all three mech bosses um, simultaneously. I think that's something that we absolutely have to look into. But anyway, guys, I am rambling. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for all of the tips and suggestions you guys have had to offer. And if you have any other tips to help me stay alive, just a little bit longer. Make sure you put them in the comments below and I will see you next time.